Welcome to the Metals 100 coverage of the PDAC 2025 in Toronto. We are glad to have the president of PDAC itself, Dr. Raymond Goldie, here with us today. How are you doing, Dr. Goldie? Two thumbs, both <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you for your enthusiasm here. Let's, let's start off by, because this is your going to be a final year with PDAC, and uh, how's, this, how's the journey so far? And any things that surprises you over the whole two-year time frame? Uh, you know, can we share some of the, your thoughts there? Well, it's really not just a two-year time frame from the instant you're elected to the time you become president. <laughs> you have to serve four years as a vice president, so you get oh, a lot okay. of training in there. And perhaps that was something I, I hadn't fully anticipated. But during that training process, uh, I discovered uh, that uh, a lot, not only about the PDAC, but also about myself, because I found that I am uh, very good at uh, drafting governance documents. And I also learned that I'm even better at drafting governance documents uh, when I work with a team of diverse people. Interesting. And uh, maybe you can share with us uh, this year any sort of main focus or anything new about the programs for the convention this year? Well, the whether it's 2025, 2024, or 2004, our convention themes are always the same. They are to what to, to identify the industry's most pressing challenges right now and decide what to do about them. And I've full confidence that the convention planning committee did a great job both in identifying those issues and in presenting what we should do to respond to those issues. And uh, no, notably, this year they include uh, securing funding. That's our number one issue this year, securing funding for exploration in Canada. We also look at uh, continuing to uh, cultivate relationships with Indigenous peoples, and we want to encourage what we call responsible mining, mining that takes into account sustainability as well as, uh, uh, as, well as environmental concerns. So what's the most significant challenge that you feel like the, the Canadian mining industry is facing these days? The most significant challenge, probably here's an illustration of, of the most significant challenge, and that is that if you look on the Toronto Stock Exchange, the Venture Exchange, which is mostly junior exploration companies, the average working capital of a TSXV a venture company is negative. And uh, that, that's because the companies just cannot get sufficient financing to keep the lights on, far less to do uh, to carry out uh, exploration. And uh, the single biggest threat or challenge to the uh, raising of capital right now is that the the by far the uh, the most important program in raising capital for junior mining companies. Is, is, is a government uh, policy called METC, Mineral Exploration Tax Credit. And the METC uh, provides uh, encouragement for investors to invest in junior mining companies through tax, a tax uh, arrangement. And uh, this, this has been running for about 25 years. It's due to expire at the end of this month. And so, I mean, priority is to ensure that uh, the METC, Mineral Exploration Tax Credit, becomes a permanent feature of the Canadian finance scene. So if you go down the hall to the Investors Exchange, you'll see up on the, the wall in the corner, come to Suite 3, come to uh, uh, Pavilion 3300, and when you get to 3300, you will find, you can sign up a petition to send to the government saying, we want, we have to have mineral exploration tax credit extended indefinitely. As you just mentioned, uh, even though we don't talk about politics that much, but the government policy really affecting uh, the mining industry too. So uh, in reality, in this real world, uh, living in Canada, we're you know, seeing a big probability that we'll see new sets of ministers in the energy resources innovation across all sectors. So what do you think in terms of your sector, what do you want to tell them when a new set of uh, ministers uh, come on board one day? I, th I think the, I tell those ministers, uh, Mr. Or Ms. Minister, uh, 
I want to realize that, that uh, the mineral industry is a cornerstone of Canada's economy. It generates over $100 billion in uh, uh, dollars in, in gross domestic product, and it supports hundreds of thousands of jobs. And most importantly, it assists in the, uh, and supports the regional development of the remote parts of our huge country. And we've got to keep this sector strong, and we want to ensure that we have not only the raw materials for growth. The, the way I look at it is that our members, the Prospectors and Developers Association, they will find new mines. The miners will mine those mines and the ores that they produce. We'd like to see more of them processed in Canada to keep the supply chain in, in Canada. So uh, the government has begun some funding of not only uh, exploration, but uh, downstream processing, which we think is very important, particularly for some of the critical minerals. We don't have processing plants for lithium, for lithium and other uh, full-scale commercial plants for processing lithium and, and other critical minerals. We must develop them. Very, very good point indeed, because people don't talk about that that much, because they figure out you can just mine the stuff, yeah. and, and they don't talk about the processing and all the things could go be, uh, be after these. Um, so, Dr. Goldie, so uh, this is my final question. You're passing the torch to the next president. And so what will be your new adventure? I, I could just add something. I think you, you, you made a very good point about the, the importance of processing. If you think about a fine whiskey, where's all the value added in a whiskey? Is, is it the farmer who grows the barley to make the whiskey? No, there's, yeah. there's very little value there. The value added in, in whiskey is refining of it, distilling of it into, into a refined product. And that's very much the case for many critical minerals. There's lots of deposits of critical minerals. It's, the, it's how to turn, turn the deposits into the metals is, is, the real, is the real issue. Yeah, similar case to the oil and gas industry where yeah. we have lack of refineries, so we have to rely on the U.S. refineries to, to help us on that, that side. It's exactly the situation. Yeah. And uh, I'll be passing the torch on to the, the next president, and uh, I'm looking forward to that because uh, the next president's name is Karen Reese. She's uh, even better wordsmith than I am at, <laughs> uh, coming up with governor's documents, and she's got a, a great uh, track record running our Human Resources Development Committee. And how about you, yourself? Uh, what will be your new, new well, adventure? Okay. This, I, oh, yeah. this, this is the part of the interview where I get to, to say that I'm going to have more more time for people to hire me as a consultant or director. My uh, consulting business focuses on uh, 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 defining and evaluating royalties. And g given the difficulty we talked about in uh, financing junior companies through the stock market, I hope I can work to increase the use of royalties in funding exploration. Great. Uh, so best of luck for you, to you, uh, Dr. Gaudi, on your next uh, venture. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.